Hi, I'm Ree from mummyof4.com. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm sharing my top tips for preparing and getting organized so that you can make the most of the school holidays with your children. The first thing you're going to do is to make a summer bucket list. So get together with your children and brainstorm all of the fun things that you want to get done. Just brainstorm all the ideas. So these could be basic things like trips to the park, painting, play-doh, just little basic things that can be done quite cheaply or even in the house. They could be trips, perhaps to visit somewhere locally, somewhere further afield, to go shopping in certain shops, anything that you fancy doing. And then also maybe a job you've been meaning to get done around the house. Maybe you want you to challenge your children to learn something new and we will get onto this in a little bit more depth later in the video. But brainstorm all of those ideas and get them down on paper as a family. The next thing you're going to need to do is to get out your calendar and fill out all of the things that you've already got booked in. So any trips you've got booked in, any birthdays, any dentist appointments, whatever it might be, so that you can see the days that are looking a little bit busier and the days you're going to have free to fill up with summer activities. If you're working, pop your work schedule on there, any childcare arrangements, and just get it all out there, whether you do this on paper or digitally so you can visually plan out your summer. You can see the gaps, you can see the tricky parts, you can see whether there are gonna be any childcare issues and what needs to be dealt with. My next tip is perhaps a little bit boring but will make your life a lot easier in the long run and that is to set out your summer rules and expectations from day one with your children. So although the summer is absolutely time for fun, there are still some things perhaps that you're going to expect them to do. For example, maybe before for they have free time or any screen time. And again, we shall talk about screen time later in this video. But before they do the things that they want to do, maybe they need to have got dressed, brushed their teeth, and made sure they've got a nice tidy room and a made bed. Most children, even pretty young children, can manage those things quite independently. And definitely if you've got a child that is starting school after the holidays, then you're going to need to encourage as much independence as possible. There is a printable linked below for everyone that joins my email club, which is free and you get a load of printable goodies. There are some charts that your children can use to tick off the things that you would like them to do before they go and play. Any other rules you might want to initiate through the holidays? For example, one thing that makes my life a lot easier is we have an only eating at the table or out in the garden rule because otherwise I swear if my children were snacking all over the house they would leave so many crumbs based on the amount of crumbs I find under my table that we would have mice. By eating snacks, meals, everything at the table it just means that all the mess is contained and my job is made so much easier. And these rules are going to be far easier to enforce if you set them from day one. So do your family have any rules? Are you thinking of having any rules for over the summer just to keep everything running smoothly in your family? If so, let me know in the comments. Think about your summer routine. Now I have had previous summers where we've had very little routine and very late bedtimes. The children have been allowed films in order to fall asleep, all this kind of thing. And I must admit, I have always really paid for that come September. Over the last few years, we've always had an element of routine, whether it is summer or the children are in school. So by this, I mean that on weeknights, the children don't have any TV on in their rooms at bedtime. So as with a school night, they would read before bed and then fall asleep without any TV. Whereas on the weekends in our house, then they are allowed to have a film before bed. Now what I found personally, and this may not apply to your children, but this is just something that I found, is when the children have been allowed to have a film before bed every night, then they decide that they can't fall asleep without a film. And then when they wake up in the night, they have to have it back on in order to go back to sleep, which just is a cycle you don't want to get into. So by differentiating the weeknights and the weekends, even in the summer, this has made my life a lot easier. Also by having some form of bedtime, even if that bedtime is an agreed time and a little later than it would be, in the school period, then it's much easier to slip back 
into going to school and going to bed at a normal time and getting up at a normal time. So even if you are not a massive fan of routine through the summer, I would definitely recommend creeping it back in towards the end of the summer so that you're preparing to go back to school and easing that routine back in so it's not a total shock to the system the first week of September. Set your children a summer challenge. This could be a challenge with an educational slant, could be something as simple as reading a certain amount of books a week, it could be picking up a new language using a language app, it could be working on math skills of kind of brain engaging activity every day and then perhaps reward that with a sticker chart or something and when they've filled it up there's some sort of of treat or trip or whatever it might be then this is a really good way to keep your child's brain ticking over and running smoothly over the summer so that going back to school is not a total shock stock up on your art supplies so just make sure for those rainy days you've got plenty of plain paper some safety scissors lots of pens pencils, felt tip pens and glue sticks. I have got a list which I will link in a blog post of bits and pieces that I recommend and links to all my favourite things, especially the caddy. I always get asked about the caddy. The stationary caddy, just make sure you've got one of those filled up at all times and then when your children are bored or it's raining or whatever they can just go to the stationary caddy and do a little bit of colouring or drawing and it will keep them entertained. Stock up on your snacks. Chances are your children are going to want to snack a lot because apparently children love snacking more so when they're at home than when they're in school. Why is this? Does anyone else find this that the children want a lot more snacks than they could possibly ever eat in school? when they're at home. If your children are obsessed with snacking and perhaps snacking a little bit too much, you could set up a snack shop. You could give them some money and then price up each snack and they can use their money that they've been given to purchase the snacks that they fancy. This will help them because they will have to do a little bit of mental maths to figure out how much things cost, to add things up, to work with money and giving change. They could take it in turns to be the shopkeeper. So it could be a really fun game as well as a masked educational maths activity too, but that also stops them snacking all day long because they have to think a little bit about what they want rather than just randomly taking it all. Have you tried setting up the snack shop at home before? I think it's definitely something that we're gonna be doing this summer. Use screen time wisely. Now, this is something I could actually do a whole video about because there are so many different elements to this. But in summary, you can set up something called screen time if your children have got Apple iPads. I'm sure there's something similar on Android devices, although I'm not entirely sure. So I know about iPads, I will tell you about those. If you go into settings and turn on screen time, you can set a certain amount of screen time that your children are allowed before the device turns off totally. So for games and things that I don't especially want my children playing all day, they have a limited amount of time on that allowed per day and then it switches off. There are certain apps that are allowed unlimited access to, such as maths games, reading apps, but all of the ones that are just kind of games that don't really provide anything that stretches their brains at all get switched off after a certain amount of screenplay. The other thing that happens is at bedtime, which I can set myself through the screen time app, then the iPad will turn off so that they can't actually use that overnight and it won't turn on too early in the morning so they're not encouraged to wake up at the crack of dawn just to get some screen time in. You also want to think about when your children are using screen time. I personally do allow my children to have screen time. There are lots of educational apps and things on their tablets, but I do tend to use it when I really have some work to do at home, which brings me to my next point, which is you're gonna to need to plan out how you're gonna manage working over the summer. So if you're employed, that's gonna look like getting together with your partner or whoever you share childcare with and figuring out when you're going to be working, when they're going to be working, and speaking to your employer to see if you're gonna have any annual leave, whether that will cross over, whether you can perhaps swap your hours, whether you can do more from home, whether you can be more flexible, and how you can make working around your children work for you. For me, this looks like trying to do as much work as possible before the children are off. I often work before the children get up. I've been doing that all of this school year anyway because my youngest daughter has been on half days and that's three school runs a day, so that's not a lot of time to work during the day anyway. Working before the children get up is definitely something I'm gonna carry on through the summer in order to fit it in. Maybe for you, it will look like working a little bit after they go to bed. Just have a look at your day, see where you can squeeze it in. 
If you are self-employed like I am, obviously you have the flexibility of not having to answer to anyone, but also the fact that you can't actually take any leave because no one pays you when you stop working. So just look at how you can make that work. Sometimes that means setting your children up with colouring or screen time, whatever that looks like so you can get on with things. Personally, for me, I work in my office before they get up. Then when the children are home, if my husband is in work and I am home, I will sit and work on the breakfast bar in our kitchen. And from there, I can see the children in the garden, I can see them in the dining room, and I can see them in the lounge. So I can kind of keep an eye on them while I'm working. I also split my tasks so that the stuff I need to really focus on and really concentrate on, I do when I've not got the children, so when my husband is home or before they get up. And then the things that are less brain taxing, I do when they are running round and round and round me. My next tip is to pack super early if you are going on any trips or staycations this summer. As you may know if you follow me on my Disney channel, are going on the Disney Magic at Sea UK staycation this summer, which is super exciting. So before we go on that trip, I'm going to pack probably 10 days to two weeks before, not everything, but the bulk of what I want to be taking. And the main reason for this is so none of my children wear the things that I want to pack and I'm having to last minute panic and look for things. So it's not too bad when the children are in school because generally they'll be wearing a school uniform and not wearing all their casual clothes. Whereas when they're off for the summer, they could quite easily wear all the stuff that you had kind of marked in your mind to pack. So all the things you want to pack for your holiday, scoop them up and just stick them in the suitcase. Even if you're going to bring them back out again, have a little look at them, pack them properly near at the time, just hide them so that they do not wear the things that they need to wear on holiday. And the same for if you're packing for yourself or your partner, make sure you've just put those things out of the way so you're out of your wardrobe, you're not tempted to grab them and stick them on and then realise you don't have them to actually pack when the time comes. My next tip is to do a back to school stock take. What this means is rather than just blindly buying stuff for the next school year, you go through your children's things. I have got a list, again, it's in my Ultimate Mum bundle, which is free when you join my email club, which is also free. You need to go through each list for each child and say, right, how many jumpers have they got? How many skirts or trousers or whatever have they got? You may find that they don't need all new things because things fit them. Maybe you had to replace things through the year. Maybe some of it fits them, some of it doesn't, some of it's got holes in it. By doing a stock take, you know exactly exactly what you've actually got and you don't need to double up on and buy again and what you really do need to add to your back to school shopping list. I will be doing a back to school stock take this summer so make sure that you are subscribed with bell notifications turned on when I do that video but if you want to catch last year's back to school stock take then it's on screen now and there are more videos on screen as well that you may enjoy. Thanks so much for watching, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, leave me a comment, turn on the notifications, subscribe to all the things you see. Bye.